Bon voyage, bon voyage. Let's see each other's story land. Bon voyage, bon voyage. Let's go hand in hand. Hello, I am Eugene, Eugene Mustafa. I am from Aleppo in Syria. I am the youngest of eight siblings. Being the late child of my parents, I have cerebral palsy and have to be on the wheelchair. As the Syrian civil war broke out between Assad's forces and the rebels and later the ISIS militants, my family and I fled Aleppo and went to Turkey. When I was 16 years old, Nasreen, my older sister and I, Nerda, my married sister with her children and a few other relatives fled Turkey to go to Lesbos in Greece. We took a dangerous voyage by boat, which I call the route of death, where we were not even sure of reaching safely. I clearly remember the day when my sisters and I took the journey to cross the sea to reach Lesbos. The sky was cloudless and the sea was a beautiful turquoise blue. The path to the beach was rocky and hard with my wheelchair getting stuck most of the way on the pebbles and stones and hence I had to be carried with my wheelchair most of the time. My cousins called out in glee and happiness, you are the queen, you are the queen, new gene in your chair. At that moment of time, I felt like an ancient monarch being carried along. Once we were at the beach, we waited for the smuggler to arrive, who we had given our money to. Each one of us had paid the smuggler $1,500. The beach was strewn with old clothes, medicines, toys, backpacks and old life jackets. Human debris too. But we did not care. We just wanted to go on our journey. After some time, the smuggler arrived with four made in China boats. 38 of us were crammed inside one small grey dinghy with my wheelchair taking most of the space. It was going to be the biggest adventure of my life and I was wondering why were the people so nervous and scared. I was excited too because it was the first time in a boat for me and I behaved as if I was six instead of 16. A smuggler told Uncle Emmerd that driving a motorboat was just like riding a motorbike who then watch YouTube videos to learn. But once we were in the sea, we saw that was not the case. The sea was not calm. The boat moved zigzag here and there with wave after wave hitting us. Some cried out, some called out to God, some vomited. My aunt Shirin's bag full of jewelry and valuables fell in the water. Few of my cousins used their shoes to scoop out the water that had collected in the boat because of a tear it developed. Some wanted to throw my wheelchair in the water. I couldn't swim. I should have been worried. But at that moment of time, I was higher sitting on that wheelchair. I was higher than everybody else on the boat. And I felt like Poseidon, Lord of the Sea, sitting in his chariot. I smiled at the thought. I went on laughing whenever a wave hit us. People thought that I should have seen a psychiatrist for laughing out there. I too was praying, but quietly and practicing deep breathing exercises. We were lucky from the three other boats with us to overturn close to the shore and the refugees had to run to the beach and one was intercepted by the Turkish coast guards. I was on the lookout for pirates who were known to hop on into the boat and steal the valuables and belongings of the refugees. But all that I could see were boats, hundreds of boats with hundreds of refugees in them. A mass exodus was taking place. After three and a half hours of traveling, we finally could see land with people teeming at the shore. We were lucky too. We had reached land safely. There were many a boat with people in it, refugees in it, that met a watery grave. Innocent lives were lost. Later on, on Facebook, we had read about little three-year-old Ellen 
and his siblings and others who sank in the water and met a watery grave. His body washed ashore, lying face down in the surf, in his long blue shorts and red shirt. And I think that must have been the time when the world took more notice of our troubles and our sad plight. The boat bumped towards the rocky shore. We could see it teeming with volunteers with happy faces and outstretched hands holding towels, biscuits and bottled water. As I was lifted with my wheelchair on the shore, I was told that I was the first refugee to be seen in a wheelchair. Suddenly we heard somebody ask if anybody knew English. I do, I do, I cried out in excitement. Everybody turned to look at me. This was the turning point in my life. Finally, I got to speak English to the re a real English speaker. Not going to school, getting to see hundreds of documentaries and programs on National Geographic came in handy when I needed it the most. The person who had asked if anybody knew English was a Spanish photojournalist. He walked towards me and asked me how my trip had been. I told him that this was the best trip of my life because I don't think that I would get a chance to be at sea again. And he asked me what were my expectations of Europe. I thought for a moment and said, we are not numbers, we are humans and we expect freedom just like any normal person. And from then on, Nasreen and I and Herda traveled and traveled and traveled till we reached uh, Germany again to be with our older brother Shair. Every day we get to read and see sensational news on the social media and the newspaper about happening all around the world. Some of them stay with us because of the troubles that innocent people and children have to go through because of the greed and selfish nature of man, of wanting more, having to leave their old homes, old places and go to a new land, facing hatred and anger, being migrants and refugees, seeking asylum in a new place. I am Poini Mehta, your storyteller, New Jean, an incredible story of a young girl on the wheelchair from war-torn Syria. Thank you.